Buddy Bailey was at spring training with the Braves in 1983 when manager Joe Torre told him his career path would be different than expected. He said the organization needed a rookie league, a guy, somebody who could manage rookie league and some people in the front office that had seen me a couple years as a player in the minor leagues that recommended me to be the guy. And I tried, I tried to talk Joe out of it <laughs> like a dummy. I said, no, Joe, uh, but anyway, I go out on the field, come in, and I just got a bad feeling. So I went over, I looked around, I thought maybe somebody's playing a joke for a minute now. And I asked the clubhouse guy, and the club, he goes, oh, no, you're a coach now, you're in the other locker room. So I walk over to the coaches, my locker's right beside that. His introduction to his new profession came in 1983 with rookie level Pulaski. And from the very beginning, Bailey set the tone on a coaching career that's now made him the 11th manager ever to reach 2,000 minor league wins. And when I got there, we didn't have catcher, so I was leading the stretch. I was catching the bullpens. I was catching the live BP. I mean, I was like still a player, but trying to get it all done to get it right. And then uh, I said, well, I got to have a clubhouse meeting. So I'm, I'm sitting in my office, walk through the door, going in there, and I was really, I was like, oh, and then I got nervous a little bit. So then I walk in, and after about two words, I looked at the players, and they hadn't been in pro ball at all. They were whiter than this piece of paper right here. I said, gosh, you're sweating bullets and more scared to me, and then I was fine, and then that was that. He's got a very unique personality. He's got a very engaging personality. He's very, he's a huge character, and I think people that are around him for three minutes or you know longer understand how big of a character he is. So when you get around him, he's, he's so passionate that I don't think people can fight but connect with him, you know. He's pretty good at uh, communicating with us when uh, we have those pre-game meetings out there, but uh, he'll tell jokes, you know, he likes to laugh from time to time with us, so it, he, he just, he relates to you, but in his own way. It's tough to explain, but he knows how to do it. He was the first manager that I worked with in 1991 in my first year in professional baseball, and I really didn't know what to expect, but Buddy was extremely nice to me, and uh, I started out as a groundskeeper, and he he kind of uh, explained a lot of things to me, and he was easy to work with about what they needed to do on the field and when they needed to do it, and just his uh, his kindness to me and his passion for the game and how hard he worked and uh, how much the the players that played for him liked him and in, uh, enjoyed playing for him because he was a, a a great teacher and still is. And Bailey's career led him from Pulaski and eventually to the 1986 Durham Bulls. He just started talking to us about uh, the movie Bull Durham because we were about to play it on the on the bus and he just told us his whole story. I mean, he basically told us that the movie's about him. You know, the guy who made the movie was uh, asking him questions and picking his brain and trying to see what it's all about. He was the manager of that team, you know, and he was sat down and interviewed a couple times for like the screenplay and all that. And that just kind of blew all of our minds, you know, just kind of like, wow, this guy really has, you know, done it all. And there were guys in the movies that he was coaching at the time, so I mean, I love that movie, so to know that it's about my manager is pretty cool. Then it was released early in 88, and ironically, the team, I was managing the Durham Bulls in 88 again, and we were going to play in Salem, and they called up more and said, hey, we didn't get to talk down the field, it's really messy, we're probably not going to take BP, if you guys want to come later, okay, thanks. So since it's checkout day in the minor leagues, everybody's got a crowd in two or three rooms. Called around, you guys want to go to the mall? Sure. So we go to the mall at 12, 15, 12, 30, and guys got them something neat. And then we saw that Bull Durham was going to play at like 140. So as a team, all of us as the Durham Bulls walked into the movie theater in Salem, Virginia and watched the movie as the Durham Bulls too. Bailey helped lay the groundwork for the Braves' run of 14 straight divisional titles. He moved from Atlanta's organization to the Red Sox, and then on to the Cubs, guiding numerous young players that cemented the foundation for a pair of historic World Series championships. I think it's the, the way that he sets up his summers with his players. I think it's a, a really important step for our players to, to go through, buddy. Yeah, the, I bet if you did a, a, a deep dive on, on his impact, you'd see that pretty much all these players have come through him and have uh, spent a summer with him, and there's no doubt that he's had a massive impact on what's going on there. I've seen him out here at 9 o'clock in the morning throwing bat in practice back in those days. If, and those were the days we didn't have but uh, a manager and a pitching coach didn't have a hitting coach. So Buddy did a lot of stuff that uh, managers uh, don't have to do these days. Uh, just an extremely 
hard worker and passionate about the game and about teaching the game and seeing guys succeed. He was as happy as anybody when a player got promoted up to the next level. Genius. Um, I think what most people don't get to see, which we in the system are all lucky to see every morning in spring training, we have our uh, daily reviews of the, the, the past day. And when we go through the game reports from the day before, Buddy goes through it without a, without a note sheet, without a paper, um, totally by memory, 100% oh, accurate. We'll call him Rain Man in the, in the meetings. And uh, it's just, it just his recall. And he'll, he'll talk about games from you know, 25 years ago as if they happened yesterday. And that's, that's a special talent for sure. Bailey's natural skill as a tactician hasn't just led him to success in America. He's led Tigres de Aragua to six Venezuelan Winter League titles and a Caribbean Series championship. And I think he, he has so much, so many knowledge about this game and that uh, he can share with everybody and help us to, to, to succeed. And, and, and I consider Buddy Bailey like he's another Venezuelan Venezuelan citizen because he's been going there and he's not afraid to go there. He, he loves our country and, uh, and, and, and to me he's a legend and for a lot of people he's a legend. No matter where he's been, one thing is clear. Buddy Bailey's career has touched many. I think Buddy Bailey, uh, he just has a different demeanor about himself. Um, he expects the best from you every time out. Um, you know, he has guys doing early work every single day you know, getting their mind right for the game, um, making sure that you're ready to play. You know, we all have that one goal of playing in the big leagues, and I think he's very, he does a great job at developing players and, you know, getting us to reach our dream. Buddy kind of showed me the ropes because I came in in 1991 as a rookie at the age of 40, and Buddy just kind of took me under his wing and said, when it's time to do this, you need to do this. And, he was understanding and uh, he, he helped me do that without being demanding and uh, getting angry at me when I screwed up. But uh, he was just great to work with both of those years and I enjoyed uh, 1991 and 1992 a lot. So for me he's a legend and every time when I face him, I mean to me it's a privilege. One word, just a legend. I grew up old country boy in Virginia and had to go mow the yard and get the weeds out and bale hay and slop the hogs and water horses and cows and slop the pigs and I, you know, I think that's helped me though because I thought I was going to be a high school football or baseball coach. And then luckily that day came when Joe Toy called me and but Braves wanted me, got to bypass a lot of that, got in pro ball, right place at the right time and a couple I've been in three organizations that are really professional top of the line organizations uh, have treated me well. I hope I've given them the dividends back by busting my butt trying to help them develop the players and, win and be contenders in the big leagues. So it's a trade-off and I look back, really can't complain about any of it.